mindless scrolling on the phone, all that swiping and watching, it can leave you with a feeling of guilt, frustration, and a feeling of being unproductive. Before you know it, you've wasted an hour or two of your day. You gotta reset. There's this habit and impulse to always check my phone. I would have these feelings of being anxious. I need to have my phone. I might miss something. This led me to asking, why am I so attached to my phone? And I started to ask myself, what is it that I'm avoiding? Is it going out for a walk? Is it reading a book? And I really started to look at how I was using my phone and what I could eliminate as far as distractions and those things that were causing me to be tied to my phone. This is video two of five in a series on digital minimalism and my journey as I simplify and declutter my digital life. This video is about creating an intentional phone setup for digital minimalism. Let's take a look at how I set up my phone to support me to consume less and be more creative in my business and have more freedom. The first step is to set up your home screen. I set up widgets on the home screen so I don't have to open up my phone and get distracted. I stopped to think for a few moments and be intentional with what really was important to me to have on this screen. What is it that I use as far as productivity apps that really help me to zero in and be focused and minimize all the distractions? Because every time I would go into my phone, I would see notifications. Even though I had some of them turned off, it was very tempting to go to a shopping site or go to social media just for a moment before I knew it, 30, 60 minutes had gone by. So one of the apps that I wanted to have on my home screen was the timer because I use this when I'm doing my deep work or I want to be focused and get something done whether it's cooking or I'm doing work in my office I set the timer for 55 minutes I also use the timer for when I'm parking and I don't want my parking meter to run out the second widget that I wanted to have on my home screen was my calendar because my calendar really is my go-to place to tell me what it is that I'm up to next or an appointment that I have. The third widget that I added was the Google Maps because when I get in my car I'm going to different projects each day and I want to check the traffic patterns or any road closures. So I wanted to have that quick and easy right on my home page so it was easy for me to plug in the information. There's also a few key productivity apps that literally changed my life over the course of the last several years and it's helped me to minimize the amount of places I look to find the information. I've created a free download for you with my favorite productivity apps that's going to help you along with your journey on digital minimalism and I've included the link in the description. The next thing I did was turn off the always on mode on my phone. The always on display setting allows a dim version of your lock screen to stay visible. It's tempting to keep checking when the display is dimmed and always on and I noticed this that it was a distraction because I would see notifications popping up. This is on default and when you first set up your phone make sure you go into settings turn off always on, scroll down, tap display, then brightness, and then toggle off always on display. The next setting I turned off was raise to wake. When you lift your phone, the screen automatically detects the motion and turns on the screen. This is useful if you're in the dark and you need a little bit of light, but I found it distracting and so I wanted to turn it off. Sometimes you may not want to have your phone screen to turn on from a simple motion like putting it in your pocket or in your purse. To turn raise to wake function on or off, open settings, tap on display and brightness, toggle off raise to wake in the menu. The next setting on my phone that I want to change is I wanted to change the wallpaper so there was a calming and inspiring image that appeared every time I went to my phone instead of distraction. To change the wallpaper on your phone, go to settings, tap wallpaper, select new and upload a calming and inspiring photo or image that you've created. Once you've uploaded the photo, you can also customize the other screen by choosing a gradient, a blur, or an image. I use gradient because I just find it's less distracting behind the apps that I have on my phone. The next area on my phone to declutter was the apps on my phone. This is when I ask myself, what apps do I need to run my business on a daily basis and communicate with those in my business 
and in my personal life. I provide a service-based business and I also have my online courses. In my service-based business, I'm simultaneously using two or three apps at any given time to implement the organizing systems. I have my Brother Label app that I'm using. I'm using my inventory app, Sortly. I might be using Google Keep to make notes and I'm also using the Reminders Note. Sometimes I'm sourcing products while I'm on site. Clients are asking me questions. And so these are all of the essential apps that I need to have at my fingertips that went on the first page. The apps that I put on the second page of my phone are things like the parking app, shopping sites, my social media, other business apps. I've grouped them all together in a group according to their topic. I love using the search app library. When I was going through my phone, I realized that I don't need to have four or five pages, which I used to have, and I've got it down to two swipes of my finger, and I'm in the apps library, and I can just type in one or two letters, and the app will come up. This has allowed me to be very minimal with the amount of apps and visual clutter that I found was happening when I had too many apps on too many pages on my phone. I was also very ruthless with the apps that I don't use. So things that I store inside of my app library are things that I use less frequently, maybe once a month or from, I think that I'm gonna use sometime down the road. If an app or anything tech doesn't simplify my life, I won't use it. And if it takes more than three clicks to get into something, to add something to a to-do list, I'm not gonna use it either. You also have to remember when you have tech in your life and you download these apps, there is a learning curve. You need to schedule time to learn how to use your devices and the apps so they do simplify your life. One goal that I've set out for myself is once a month, I just wanna take 15, 20 minutes and learn one thing on my phone that's going to make things easier for me. I also like to have a little fun with my parents. My dad will often say, hey, I bet you you don't know how to do this. And I said, oh, show me. And it's amazing. I've learned these great little tips from him that I actually didn't know. Digital minimalism doesn't happen overnight. It is a bit of a process and you'll learn things over time of what your daily frictions and frustrations are and you'll want to plug those and just get them right out of your life. When you have an intentional phone set up, it's going to help to minimize the distractions and you'll be more focused and present in the moment. Remember to download the free app guide that I know is going to transform your life. In the next video in this digital minimalism series, I'll be sharing digital minimalism habits that will change your life. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.